as the team here at Rayband. We want to bring you a better and brighter future. So we will start off by talking about our intended customer. We believe that our product, Rayband, would be a useful tool for people with albinism specifically. But before we get into that, I'll give a brief overview on what albinism is. In general, albinism is a genetic condition with many different subtypes. People with albinism either do not produce enough melanin pigment or do not produce any melanin at all. This causes a lack of pigmentation in their hair, skin, and eyes, which can lead to a bunch of health problems, the most worrisome being skin damage. Skin damage can happen from overexposure to sunlight. The sun emits ultraviolet, also known as UV radiation, and melanin pigment acts as a shield that protects the skin from harmful UV radiation. Since people with albinism do not produce enough melanin to protect their skin from sunlight, they are at more risk of exposure to UV radiation, which can damage skin cells. Without proper protection from the sun, people with albinism can develop a bunch of skin problems, like elastosis, which is deterioration of dermal tissue, actinic keratosis, which are scaly patches on the skin, photoaging, which is thick, wrinkled skin, and they can develop many other skin problems. In fact, the biggest risk of overexposure to sunlight is skin cancer, which people with albinism are especially at risk of getting. As you can see in the bottom right image, people with less melanin in their skin, like people with albinism, have a high risk of getting skin cancer compared to people that have more melanin in their skin. Overall, overexposure to sunlight is really damaging to people with albinism. So our product would be useful because it can notify wearers when they've been exposed to too much sunlight. This way, Ray-Ban can help people with albinism take extra precautions, prevent overexposure to harmful UV, UV radiation emitted by the sun, and help them protect themselves against severe skin damage. So let us discuss the scientific background that supports our product, Ray-Ban. Firstly, ultraviolet or UV radiation is comprised of UVA and UVB uh, wavelengths, mostly exposed to uh, through sunlight that can penetrate the skin. Now, excessive exposure to UV radiation can cause skin damage, and insufficient protection can even induce skin tumors such as basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and in some cases, malignant melanoma. Now, melanin is pigmentation predominantly produced in the basal layer of our epidermis or outer layer skin. And it acts as a physical barrier against uh, UV radiation by acting as an absorbent filter that reduces the penetration of UV radiation into our skin. So as we introduced earlier, a greater amount of and distribution of melanin in the skin results in greater UV protection, whereas less melanin results in greater UV sensitivity. Therefore, persons affected by albinism comprise of a high risk group of people that are especially vulnerable to the harmful effects of UV radiation. For example, a cross-sectional study spanning from 2010 to 2017 reported that persons with albinism re represent a distinct risk group for skin cancer. Moreover, it was reported that the popularization and compliance of photoprotective measures, especially reducing UV exposure, is essential to reducing the morbidity and mortality of individuals affected by albinism. So taken together, we designed a product, Rayband, that is a wearable medical device to aid the, te the detection of safe as well as excessive exposure to UV radiation, where it'll be especially useful in detecting UV radiation in a heterogeneous environment to improve ability in reducing harmful exposure. This would take into account the duration of exposure as well as intensity of UV radiation. It's important to discuss how the FDA will approve Rayband as a medical device. Similar devices to Rayband, such as Shade and SunSense, are targeted to the general population as wellness products to prevent excessive sun exposure. The FDA defines a medical product as a device intended to diagnose, cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent disease. Rayband is targeted specifically towards individuals with albinism to prevent sunburns and other complications that come with excessive sun exposure. Rayband will be classified as a class two moderate risk device. Devices are stratified based on the risk they pose if the device malfunctions or is misused. Rayband does possess a moderate risk of sunburn if it happens to malfunction. 
most wearables as, are classified as a class two device. So Rayband will likely be a class two device as well. Rayband will go through the 510K pathway for approval by using a substantially equivalent device as a predicate. The 510K pathway allows class one and two devices to go through approval without clinical studies to avoid pre-market approval. Many similar devices on the market can be used as a predicate for Rayband, such as Shade and SenseSense. Pilot studies are meant to test the safety and efficacy of a product. If a pilot study were to take place for Rayband, we would require a randomized group of participants with albinism. Our control group would consist of standard of care and our experimental group would be using Rayband. Our primary endpoint for this study would be the frequency of sunburns in the patients as we expect our experimental group to experience less sunburns on the control. To effectively sell our product, not only do you have to have an understanding of the areas that excels in, but also where it is lacking. This is why a SWOT analysis will be conducted on ribbon to determine its strengths, weaknesses, as well as possible future opportunities and threats that may arise. So let's take a look at some of the strengths of the Rayband. One of the main strengths of the Rayband is that it's wearable and compact. This allows for easy integration into the individual's daily life without much additional discomfort being caused. It is also easy to operate and has a very flexible sensory system. Additional sun protection, such as SPF, can be applied directly onto the sensory system in order to gather more accurate data on the ultraviolet exposure that an individual is experiencing. But what about the other side of the coin, the weaknesses? Well. The Ray-Ban itself serves as a warning rather than actual protection for the user. This may dissuade some people from actually purchasing it as it doesn't help them protect themselves from the UV exposure. Also, little else outside, outside of main function is in the Ray-Ban as its only function is to not only detect UV exposure but also indicate warnings when too much UV exposure occurs. Opportunities in the future for the Ray-Ban include an increasing albino population in Africa, which would result in an increased growth of the market that we are currently targeting. Not only that, greater awareness of albinism as a health issue is also increasing throughout the years. This would portray the Ray-Ban as a more necessary product. Some threats that can occur to the Ray-Ban are similar products that have already been established in the market. These include UV color bands, as well as the sun sense and the shade UV sensor. Although it's slightly differing, most of these products serve very similar functions to a Ray-Ban to varying degrees. Focusing only on albinism may also lead to a niche market. Should, should penetration to the specific part of the market fail, then it may be difficult to rebound back. Now I'll we'll be going over the competitor analysis for our product. So there are already many products on the market with the same fundamental function as our product, which is to detect and track the exposure to sunlight and UV radiation. With many products already on the market, there are many which have the same level of technology as our product, as well as there are many inferior, cheap, and one-time use alternative products. Essentially, there are two types of competitors that we're going up against the high-end brands and the low-end brands. The high-end brands and low-end brands, they basically differ based on quality and price. At Ray-Ban, we're looking to get the best of both worlds. We're looking to have high quality of technology and also matched with a low, lower, than competitor, lower than competitive price, which is around 200 US dollars. We'll be different from our competitors because we will be marketing our product as a medical device for individuals affected by albinism and other skin conditions. This will be done by publicizing the results of our pilot study, which will help attract individuals diagnosed with these skin conditions. Furthermore, we believe collaborations with skincare brands, which are common among people that uh, experience albinism and skin conditions, will further help boost our product into the market and into uh, the hands of users. We believe these factors with, uh, with even a saturated market, we believe our tactics uh, of marketing and design will help convince our target uh, consumer audience to choose Ray-Ban over our competitor.